How's it going guys? What are we doing? And welcome to a brand new video tutorial from iPinus. Today we got an exciting video tutorial talking about ESX features. So ESX or ECMAScript 2015, we're going to be taking a look on how these actually the main differences between var versus let and versus counts keywords. So as we all know, there's actually a couple of keywords, uh, especially up in the ESX uh, coming up to the JavaScript world, of course, it introduced a couple of more other keywords that allows you actually to declare variables on your JavaScript code. So there's actually uh, the var keyword, which, you know, the common keyword used to declare variables. There's the let keyword, which is new, up and or coming from the ES6 features. And obviously, there is the const keyword to declare constants uh, variables. So we're going to just be taking a look on the main differences between these three keywords and why you should use one over the other and what type of situations you use you should use one over the other and uh, you know the major differences between these keywords and how you can use them properly so es6 as we all know it came in into uh, 2015 so every single year there's the ecmascript a uh, new version or new release is you know it's going to be released in every single year with uh, new features and new functionality so you can just you know upcoming things you can take a look on the features and you can you know have uh you know some tests on all of those to get much better in the javascript world so we're going to be starting off with the var keyword and how it's going to be used for the var keyword so the main features about var keyword it actually can be redeclared which means you can redeclare using the var keyword without getting an error that this ender to var variable already exists and of course, it is global scope, which means any variable declared out of function scope can be accessed in any function on the global window, which is super bad. And when it comes to like, you know, sharing packages or requiring other packages to work on your current project, this can be uh, really, really bad and not intuitive at all. So it can create bugs from nowhere. So uh, we're going to be trying here to do like a simple code. We're going to do, uh, for example, we're going to do a global variable. And I'm going to initialize this to 1500. Um, for example, I'm going to do a function. I'm going to do local function. And uh, this local function, what it does, you're going to have like a global var. Uh, it's going to be just 2000. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just going to update this because I'm not really this. I'm just updating this to see actually the changes and how things are, should be working. And this obviously is a valid code for all of developers, how you can update a variable and you know change its value. I can do inside, which means inside the current um, function scope. Uh, later on, I can call the function. And finally, after calling the function to see if there's any changes, I can console log again. I can say outside, which means outside the function scope. And obviously, what I can do is just just you know output the global variable um, value. So I can do yarn start to start the program, or using node, of course. I got inside 2000 and outside 2000 because just updating this, then doing console.log, which means this is gonna be erased and the new value 2000 is gonna be there. So yeah, we're gonna have that as a new variable and this is obviously pretty valid. Now, if you do something like this, uh, in most common programming languages, it's gonna be an issue and you're gonna have a raised error and exception uh, says identifier has already been taken, so you can't redeclare that. But in JavaScript, using the var keyword, you can easily redeclare that. And uh, this is only working for the var keyword though. So we can do yarn starts, let's clear C, no errors. And what we got, we got inside, we got a new variable. So this is actually a completely new variable, which is separated from this one. So we can set the value of this and we can work with it without any issues and stuff. Uh, so only the function scope knows about this global variable. Um, which means it becomes a local variable in this case. So this and that, uh, this is actually the global and the local are completely separated. So they don't need know each other's and they got different values up in the uh, call of this functions and console logs. So that's actually the main feature about variables, which means if you got this global variable, it can be accessed in the global window. So any function anywhere on your code after declaring a global variable or declaring a variable basically using the var keyword can access that anywhere inside of another functions so it's actually globally scoped which can be very bad if it's something like do like global variable and we already declare that with a different value 
then you can just go in and use it, but it's already being declared as a global variable. So it can have bugs or it can create bugs in your code. So that's why ver keywords or the var keywords basically, um, you know, have been avoided a lot by developers. And that's why lets and const have been um, born from the ES6 features. So that's actually basically the main things about global variables or the var keyword. One more thing is actually about hoisting and what I mean by hosting is actually using a variable before the declaration. So if you can do something like this, so console.log, um, I can, I don't know, I can do something like hoisting. And uh, what simply I can do in this case, I can do some variable, which is haven't been declared this variable whatsoever. I yarn start, I got an issue because some var is not defined, so it can't find that. But if I do this magical trick, I, I declare this, or I use the sum variable, I output this, the value, and then afterwards, I use the declaration, I run that, boom, no errors whatsoever. So yeah, that's super simple. And that's actually what's special about the var keyword. So you can use the variable, then you can redeclare or declare that. And of course, initially, this is going to have an indefined value, and you can use it anywhere in your code. Uh, which is pretty cool, of course. So this is going to be interpreted into this. So after it goes through interpreter and it says it's a var keyword, what it does, it's just going to do something like this. It is going to be initial to undefined. Then you can, you know, use some var or something uh, to anything. So that's actually how the code is going to be interpreted if you put it through the, um, I don't know, the JavaScript uh, engine and or in the interpreter, and it's going to be like working like this. So this is actually what hoisting is about in um, the JavaScript word using the keyword or the var keyword. Now let's see the difference between the var keyword and the let keyword. So let keyword has been introduced since ES6 and has been recommended since there since ES2015 or the ES6 version. Let or using let keyword instead of var keyword has been recommended by all of developers since it is much more secure and has a lot more for features to you know prevent have like intended bugs and prevent like recurring variables and hoisting and stuff like that. So it's actually also for a scopes variables. So for the let variable what is have it has actually a used scope variable declaration. So every single scope has its own variable. So you can't get out of it, which means if you got a file here which is actually called as well a module since the S6 come in. So this module or this file have only its variables. So these variables only contained inside these modules. So the scape of these variables or the let variable is only going to be existing inside of this module and not on the global window or not the global scope, which is, you know, perfect since we got some issues with the var keyword. So if we try another example, for example, in here, uh, we're going to have, um, I don't know, some like global variables we did before. So I'm going to do global variable with a 1500 as we did before I'm going to do a function so it's going to be local function again and um, yeah but in this case we can do a global variable and we can just update this to 2000 as we did before we can do console.log I can do inside as we did before again and I can call the local function and simply can do um, console.log outside for sure and um, yeah we got the global variable now here it's going to have to do the updation or the update basically uh as however as it wants it's not going to have an issue whatsoever but this is going to be working basically fine if you do yarn starts it's clear you see you got the code uh running without any issues but if we try something like lens global variable so what that's going to happen nothing happened basically because we are declaring this inside of a local scope and this is actually being known in a global scope so they both have their identifiers and they are both separate variables so they don't uh, compete or they don't actually have any relation between each of two of these variables and you can use let's because let is actually a scoped variable it's not global scoped no it's a function scoped variable or it's current scope variable with the same identifier is going to have and no issues. So two variables with the same identifier can be declared in different scope very easily in using let's. And of course, you cannot redeclare variables on using let's. And of course, 
variables can be updated but not redeclared using let. So uh, as we did before, cannot redeclare uh, variables. So as we did redeclare before using the, the var keyword, uh, here we cannot do that. So we can do global variable, we assign like a new um, value to it. We're gonna just simply have an issue or an error. So we do identifier, global var has already been declared. So you cannot redeclare that. But on the other hand, if you use the var keyword, we will use that very easily without any issues, which could be, uh, you know, an issue, and we can we could lose some like uh, issues considering that. So redeclaring anything could be useful using the uh, let keyword without any issues and stuff, which is super super great. And of course, if we declare that, like you know, we got global variable, we got two thousand, and um, if we just try to update that whatsoever, you're gonna have the same thing. We're not gonna have any issues updating this or anything if you just remove that the update is going to work fine either we declare that we're also going to have that working pretty much fine because they're going to be having uh, separate identifiers and separate variables so no issues are going to be raised concerning using the let's keyword so actually that's the main differences or this fact makes let a better choice than var when you're using let you don't actually have to bother if you have used the name of a variable before as a variable exists only within its scope. So also since a variable cannot be redeclared more than once within a scope, then the problem discussed area that occurs with var does not occur here with let. And that's the main point about let and var and their main differences between them. Now with hoisting again, so for example, we try to do another um, let variable. For example, I can do console.log uh, hoisting in here and it can do some variable and uh, I do let some var as we did before with the var keyword so this basically if we tried it you're gonna have an issue because some var is still not defined so either we do that or we don't hoisting is not supported or it doesn't do the same thing as var does so it's not gonna initialize this to undefined for you and it's gonna put it there uh, like before declaration is gonna be used then you can do let's or something let var so that's not going to happen whatsoever and uh, we're going to have like the hoisting is not going to work with let's as it does work with the var keyword so that's actually the main basically difference between uh, hoisting in var keyword using the var keyword and hoisting using let keyword now for const keyword what it use it for is actually for declaring constant values variables so you're gonna have just a constant value uh, for that particular variable so instance you do const for example do const this it only can be initialized up in declaration so once you declare that you put the identifier of your variable you are going to be initializing this at the same line otherwise you won't be able to uh, you know update that because it is constant value so you only can set the value of this variable the constant variable uh, only uh, up in declaration so that's actually the main thing about constants and why it is constant because it cannot be updated after it is uh, declared or initialized so yeah that's the main point about const and how they work and they basically share the same similarities with let's since they, they both created at the same asx level so they share all of the similarities with that they are like scopes or you know local scopes can only be initialized in declaration for sure and uh, the block scopes which means can only be accessed through the block it was declared on and cannot be declared or updated and you actually use it for immutable pattern and construction objects and can be very very useful for declaring objects because objects attributes or properties can be uh, changed easily but the const or the main objects reference cannot be changed so if you try to run that you're gonna have the same thing either way we do const again in here uh, we run that again like we save it we run it we're not gonna have the issue whatsoever the issue is if we try to do something like global variable uh, I don't know equals 3000 in here whatsoever and um, we do yarn starts we're gonna have like assignment to constant variable which is an exception and we're gonna have like a type issue or a type error and we cannot do that so that's basically what it is you can do for the cons for example for objects so uh, my objects for example in here and you can have like um, name is gonna be I don't know like stamping words or anything um, you know uh, job developer 
So you're gonna have that. So actually, only the object reference is actually const, but the properties are not const whatsoever. So we do um, something like in in this case. So we can do this. Um, we can we can take that. So we can do my object. We're gonna have all the objects properties right over there. So we got name, stamp, anyways, and the job as a developer. Uh, but the other hand, what we can do, we cannot change the object whatsoever. So you can do like assign it to an empty object. We're gonna have this issue of assignments to um, accounts variables, which is, you know, a problem, you cannot do that. But what we can do, we can do this to uh, name, change it to Alex or anything. We can just save it, we run that. We're gonna have the same thing. So we're not gonna have an issue, but it works perfectly because only the object reference is gonna be const, but its app properties and attributes can be changed however you want. And that's actually why const is super great and it works with the immutable pattern very, very great uh, working with const. So that was actually basically the main or the major differences between var or var, let, and const and how you can use them and which uh, places or what type of situations you should think about using uh, different type of keywords. And actually the main keywords exist in JavaScript nowadays, actually these three keywords that you should be considered. So hopefully guys, you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully you understood the main differences between these three keywords. And hopefully you liked actually that. So if you like this type of video tutorials, just let me know in the comments below. below. Uh, I'll be very happy to, you know, give you more tutorials like that about this in uh, JavaScript features like ESX or ESNext for upcoming ES ECMAScript versions. And I'll be very happy to introduce all of that. So thank you guys for watching this again. Hopefully, hopefully you've liked the video tutorial. And yeah, so thank you guys. I see you all hopefully in the next video tutorials.